no matter how fast a flower can run, can it not compete with a veil thrown from above? Before she could leap to Aunt Mandakani's side, Val had leapt into Aunt Mandakani's ribs. Wheel again and the Mantakini fell down with a terrible howl. At the same time, pitiful sounds came from the voices of all the people in that room. Like Pungujali, the others got ready to run towards Matarasi, who had fallen on the ground. At that moment, I heard a noise from upstairs. Some earthen vessels were thrown downwards in various directions. One of them fell on the lamp which was burning brightly near the emperor, the lamp went off. The room immediately went dark. Then for a while there was chaos in the hall and the long corridors around it. Suddenly, the footsteps of men were heard running quickly. Light! Light! screamed the small rascal's roaring voice. Aha! Alas! A woman's voice was heard screaming. As it sounded like the Maharani's voice, everyone's hearts fluttered and their bodies trembled. In the midst of all this confusion Pung J. Lai ran to the spot where her aunt Mantakini had fallen. She felt her aunt being lifted in front of her and placed on her lap. Whispering and crying in a heart-rending tone fell on her ears. At the door, who is he? Don't run! Stop! cried the small gardener. Punguzali guessed who the runaway might be. Just then two nurses came with lamps and entered the room. The scene that appeared in the light of the lamp was a miraculous sight that no one could have expected. Emperor Sundarachola, who had not been able to walk on his feet for three years, King Sundarachola, who had completely lost the power of his legs, got down from the bed he was lying on and walked and sat next to Mandakini. The prince was beside him. Blood was oozing from the end of a veal that ran down one side of Mandakani's rib and out the other. Vanamadavi, the daughter of Malay Aman, was seen near the bed where the emperor was lying. A sharp knife was inserted into the pillow on which the emperor rested his head beside her. When the lamp came on, the Maharani stared at the bed and saw the emperor sitting down with eyes filled with endless wonder. Then Pani's salver gently lifted Mandakani's head and placed it on the emperor's lap. Tears were flowing from Prince Arulma's Hivarmar's eyes. The emperor was crying Vimi Vimi. Punghuali saw this much in a momentary glance. In the next moment, she guessed and knew all the events that happened there. The workman from above notices that the dumb queen has forbidden it. He immediately took the tray props from above and switched off the lamp. At that time, he jumped down in the darkness and thought that the emperor was lying on the bed, stabbing him with a knife and running away. Knowing that the emperor is in danger, he has pushed away the queen who ran to the side of the bed. That's when the Maharani screams oh! Then a Kathakaran must have run towards the doorway and pushed away the little Pula Vetariar who was entering there at that time. Pungazalai knew this much by guessing. A thought arose in the back of her mind that she should go and catch the man who had done this evil deed and escaped. More than that, the thought that her aunt's end was near caused great turmoil within her. So regardless of the fact that Mandakini was lying with her head on the emperor's lap, she went over and knelt down and cried, Auntie! Auntie! He shouted. Alas! What you said has come true. I have left you alone, the sinner. She cried and lamented. But Mandakinyo never looked back to where she was. Her eyes looked longingly at the emperor's face. Why, her attention did not go to the prince who held her hand and burst into tears. How to take care of flower pot? As Pungujali began to wail more, the prince restrained his sobs and said, Samadra Kumari. What is this? Have you forgotten yourself? Have you forgotten where you are? He got up saying that. Pungazali also got a little embarrassed and stood up suppressing her grief. O oh king! I have no destiny in this world except my aunt! She exclaimed. The prince wiped the tears from his eyes and said, Pungujali! She is your aunt! But to me a mother ten times greater than my own mother! She sent you to fetch me! Yet she did not even look up at my face! Do you know the reason for this? Thirty years ago, my separated father and mother have joined today. Who are we to stand in their midst? After saying this, 
the prince once looked closely at everyone including the queen. The conspirator, thinking that his mark had escaped, switched off the lamp and jumped down to do his mischief again. But his purpose was not fulfilled as the emperor had risen. Behold my mother, Malaya Mankumari, Karakana standing in amazement. The mother who gave birth to me saw that Vila fell on your aunt. She ran away, thinking that the murderer might do his plotting again. She thought that she should do the sacrifice of life that her aunt had done. She thought that she would cover my father with her body and bear the next weapon that would fall on him. She screamed out only to see my father on the bed. If the emperor had been there, one of my father and mother would have died today. Samadra Kumari your aunt to this Chola clan, do you now realize how much service she has rendered to the Chola nation? If the emperor was defeated by the weapon of a conspirator, the Chola empire would be crushed. Your aunt did not only save her father's life and mother's life, which will forever be blamed on the Palyavetare clan. She also saved the clan name of Palyavetareyar. She saved the Chola country from a great calamity. She became the clan deity of the Chola dynasty. Flowerpot. I will never shed a single tear for your aunt. You don't have to cry for her either. No one else needs to grieve. Who can get such a divine death? Who will have the privilege of giving his life for Patty, who has been separated for thirty years? Who can die peacefully with his head in his lap? He saw that all those standing in the room and near the door were listening to his words also said. Therefore the little reaper owes more thanks to you than to anyone else. He will give you whatever gift you ask him. Even if you ask for half of his property, he will give it. When the prince said this, he was looking at the small gardener. He spoke as above to show him that he had not fulfilled his duty properly. The look of anguish on his face showed that the little reaper knew that. Gone was the majestic look that normally resided on his face. No sign of heroic pride, aspiring to anyone, fearing anything, was now absent from that face. A warrior who had run away from the battlefield with his back was now seen with a look of shame on his face, wondering what was the use of saving this life like so many others. After listening to what the prince had said at first, Pung Huali, whose heart and body were melting and moving, became the old angry sea princess when he told her about the gift. Prince. I need no one's thanks, I need no gifts. I have the king of the sea to shelter me. My boat is safe at the end of the canal. Here I go. Perhaps if my aunt survives? No, that's a vain wish. My aunt told me in the morning. I sensed what was coming. She said. She is not going to survive any more. I have no job here and if one day you and Kajumbalar princess come to Kadakare. Pungazali looked at Vanatha's place. She noticed the girl staring at her and the prince with white eyes. Chi Chi. What wish is this? I'm going, she said, hurrying towards the doorway. It was then that Vanatha, who had been standing like a bewildered woman, gained some self-awareness. She came near Pungazali and said, My dear friend where are you going? I am an orphan like you. Before she could speak further, Punguzali interrupted, Devi I am not their dear friend. You are not an orphan like me, soon old and young will come. She said. It was then that Vanati actually remembered the younger bratty. Oh. My sister doesn't know anything about what happened here. Do you want to send a message? She said. Is there a concern for that too? Is there great father at the gate of the fort? If you tell him. He will send a message, she said, moving Vanathi a little with her hand, who was standing as a distraction, and went up. Near the threshold, the small gardener stopped her again. He said, Girl. I was listening to everything said by Pawnee's Selver. What he said is absolutely true. You have saved the Pavur clan from getting immortalized. I owe you immense gratitude. I will give you whatever gift you want. Bunguzali said with a sad smile, Commander. Some of the people here are happy that the Emperor survived. Some are happy that he has regained the power to walk. 
still others are happy that the Pallavatare clan has not suffered disgrace. No one seems to be concerned about my aunt's tragic death. Shouldn't I be worried about it? I'm looking for where the killer of my aunt has gone. I'm trying to find out. Please give me away. She said. These words of Bungazali threw the fort commander Kalantaka Kandar away. Woman. I have lost to you. I have left the murderer standing idle. If I do not find him, the emperor's survival alone will not end my guilt. I was wrong to distrust your words. Where has the murderer gone? He has run away from me. Yes. Yes. He must have gone to the mine. Come. Help me. Come. I don't want to take anyone else. Let him alone be caught by me. Look what I'm doing. Saying this, the little gardener hurried towards the sculpture hall, holding the flower pot with his iron hand. Everyone else in the room stood still. Knowing the prince's wishes, they stood aloof and did not approach the emperor. All eyes were fixed on the emperor and Madarasi lying with her head on his lap. But Sundara Chola and Mandakini had blended perfectly with each other. There is no room for the thought of others to enter their hearts. I don't know what psychic salesman will say publicly about whether you can live thirty years of life in a few minutes. But there is little doubt that Sundara Chola and Mandakini lived a lifetime in those few minutes. They talked about everything they could talk to each other in thirty years. Mandakini spoke through her Nayana language. Sundara Chola mostly knew that language. He also became familiar with her sign language when he spent a few months in paradise with Mandakini at Pudathithavi during his youth. He has not forgotten them to this day. So even though Mandakini now spoke only with her eyes, his soul instantly knew the thoughts that arose in her mind. Not much to say about Mandakini. I don't feel sorry for them. Where are you, the emperor of the world? Where am I, the daughter of the wasp, mute and deaf? I was the one who was hiding all this time without coming to them. From time to time I stood at a distance and satisfied my mind. I had the privilege of dying in their lap at the moment of death. What more could I want than this? That's all Mandakini said. This is what her heart and eyes were saying back and forth. Her face was full of joy. Her facial expression did not show that she was in any pain as the vine had come out of her ribcage. She seemed to have suddenly lost all memory of her body. The time for the bird to leave the cage is near. Now, what is the bird going to care about the cage? Sundara Chola had also forgotten the memory of his body. That is why he was able to get off the bed and run to Mandakini, even forgetting that his legs were weak. But Sundara Chola was not content with saying a few words like Mandakini. He kept saying so many things. His lips were muttering into words what his eyes were saying. The rest of the room didn't understand a word he spoke. But everything became clear to Mandakini. She nodded her head in approval, she shook her head in denial. She rejoiced where she should have rejoiced, she comforted where comfort was due. Anuradhan, who was supposed to be my prana friend, has cheated. Yes, yes. It seems you say. You say that it is true that you jumped into the sea and then someone saved you. But even though Anuradhan knew this, he did not tell. Look at the disaster. Whenever I saw you I thought I saw your spirit. I thought that you are coming to take revenge on me. I thought that you had saved my dear son from the Kaveri flood, but you had thrown him into the Kaveri. Aha! Uh -huh. How would my life have been if I had known that only you were alive? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. You say that it is true that you jumped into the sea and then someone saved you. But even though Anuradhan knew this, he did not tell. Look at the disaster. Whenever I saw you I thought I saw your spirit. I thought that you are coming to take revenge on me. I thought that you had saved my dear son from the Kaveri flood, but you had thrown him into the Kaveri. Aha! Uh -huh. How would my life have been if I had known that only you were alive? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. You say that it is true that you jumped into the sea and then someone saved you. But even though Anuradhan knew this, 
he did not tell. Look at the disaster. Whenever I saw you I thought I saw your spirit. I thought that you are coming to take revenge on me. I thought that you had saved my dear son from the Kaveri flood, but you had thrown him into the Kaveri. Aha! Uh -huh. How would my life have been if I had known that only you were alive? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. Whenever I saw you I thought I saw your spirit. I thought that you are coming to take revenge on me. I thought that you had saved my dear son from the Kaveri flood, but you had thrown him into the Kaveri. Aha! Uh -huh. How would my life have been if I had known that only you were alive? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. Whenever I saw you I thought I saw your spirit. I thought that you are coming to take revenge on me. I thought that you had saved my dear son from the Kaveri flood, but you had thrown him into the Kaveri. Aha! Uh -huh. How would my life have been if I had known that only you were alive? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. What would my life have been like? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. What would my life have been like? Do you think I would have abandoned you for this great empire? Not a single day. In this way, Sundara Chola kept muttering all the thoughts that raged in his heart. At last he said, when you came before me two days ago I threw the lamp over you. Every time I saw you again I was disgusted. You must forgive me for all that. For many years I thought you were a ghost and tormented me. In the middle of the night you appeared before me in this very room and said something. Dot I thought that you were cursing my people. The hatred I felt then did not go away even when I saw you in person. In fact, you came as our family deity. You came to prevent harm to me and my people. I didn't know all that. It was only after my daughter told me about Kundeva. Alas! What a mistake I made! Forgive me! How can I show you my love? If there is no way to do it. You said that my sons should not be graduated. I know the reason for it. Why are you shaking your head? You said it for my benefit and for the benefit of my clan. There is nothing wrong with that. But people here say something and try to beat me crazy. They say you have given birth to a child. Tell me if it's true. Tell me if you have a son. I am seeking reparation for the treachery I have done to you by doing what I can to him, but people here say something and try to beat me crazy. They say you have given birth to a child. Tell me if it's true. Tell me if you have a son. I am seeking reparation for the treachery I have done to you by doing what I can to him, but people here say something and try to beat me crazy. They say you have given birth to a child. Tell me if it's true. Tell me if you have a son. I am seeking reparation for the treachery I have done to you by doing what I can to him. When Sundara Chola said this, Mandakini looked at him and then looked around. Her gaze rested on Pani's salver standing near the doorstep. Immediately the prince approached the place where his father and mother were. He sat next to his mother. Mandakini touched the prince with her hand and saw the emperor's handsome face. This is my son. The meaning came out very clearly from that vision. Thus two or three times Mandakini alternately looked at the emperor and Pani's Selvara. Then she closed her eyes. Her slightly erect head, on the emperor's lap, lent well. Mandakini's life left her body. No one has ever seen Sundara Chola Emperor Vimy cry, didn't hear. Today, everyone was stunned to see and hear him crying after winning O. Prince Arulmas Hivarman was the only one who was sane. He looked at the emperor and said Father. You need not mourn my mother's death. She never died. Has she become a deity or not? She will always be the family deity of our Chola dynasty. Said. However, Sundara Kalar Vimi never stopped crying. Did he cry for Mandakani's death? Or can we say whether he wept because of the shock of another tragic event that took place far away at the same time? Prince Arulmas Hivarma's words of election only came true. Pani Selvar later built a temple in Tanjavur for goddess Mandakini, 
whom he called the Queen of Elam when he ascended the throne under the name of Rajaraja Chola. It was popularly known as Sinhalanaki Yar Temple for some time. Eventually its name was changed to Singh Achayar Temple. Even today, visitors to Tanjore can inquire about a small ruined temple with the name Singh Achayar Temple in one part of Tanjore. <laughs>